Pardon me? Good morning. Welcome to worship here at Beautiful Savior as we gather on a rather hot and kind of sticky Sunday morning. As we gather this day, I was going to be starting off giving you all a bunch of grief as I came back and it was one of those things going up to Canada for vacation. It was the how on earth did I head north and hit heat and sun and all of that, but it seems like I came back in time just for the heat wave. So bear with us as this morning everything is just very hot and sticky with us. We give thanks for all of those that we reached out to to make sure you were doing well. If there's something that you need during this time, please let us know as we are trying to make sure we're reaching out to everyone and that we are making sure that you're doing okay with this heat. 
As we join together this day, we want to start off with a couple of announcements to draw your attention to a few things going on. First of all, a reminder and a heads up that today we will be sending out our monthly newsletter. So keep an eye out for that. It will be mailed out to you, emailed out to you in a little bit here. So it will be later on today. To, uh, tomorrow is our starting day for our VBS. So join us for our elementary school VBS tomorrow as we join together for a week of fun and adventures where we look at how God continues to lead and guide. We look at the story of Joseph, seeing how God continues to lead and the wonders of what God does with people that he has placed there. For the month of August, we will be gathering and hearing how God has led people and has led even Joseph to help in the time of famine. Well, to join in with that, with both VBS and as a congregation, we have a fundraiser that we will be gathering for as we join together with Highline uh, Food Pantry to gather food for families that are in need, specifically one of their programs that helps feed families during the summer programs and times where schools are not in session. As this is a time where many of them don't have those programs that are there during the school year. So join us as we hear about Joseph, who God continued to help lead and guide to make sure there was food for those in Egypt, and we join in for a month of gathering for that as well. The following week, we have our preschool VBS. So join us for that, for those two days as we join together for a time of rejoicing with all of our preschoolers. Um, we then have the Sunday after all of that, gathering for our barbecue that our elders host every year. So make sure you mark your calendar for the elders barbecue. And I do have to note in talking to the elders, I know many of you are used to having this be an event where you get to come receive, and it's typically a free event. This year, I have to tell you, just with everything going on, a lot of the hardships, that it is going to have an admission fee. You need to bring at least one item from our food pantry gathering. At least one item needs to be brought that day as we gather for our elders' barbecue. So even if you're gathering other things, maybe consider holding one item back. Bring an extra can of corn, as we were joking about, of all the canned corn we're going to gather that day. Or some other items that are on our list that you can then come as we gather to celebrate all the things that God is doing for us and our elders serve you as they continue to do so. The last thing that I want to make sure that I do touch on is as we uh, gather... And as we rejoice, yesterday there was a celebration as Floyd turned 90 years old. And so as we begin our celebration, as we begin our worship, we get to also acknowledge what God does in our lives as well, as we give thanks for all that God has done in Floyd's life. So let's join together singing happy birthday to Floyd. Happy birthday to you. Any blessings, Floyd, as you continue in that blessing of God that he has planned for you since before we were all even born. And as God's children this day, I invite you to stand as you are able. As we gather receiving those blessings, know that we are called by his name. We gather this day in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Those redeemed from trouble. Those whom God gathered from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Let us thank the Lord for his steadfast love and his wondrous works. Let us tell of his deeds with songs of joy. You may be seated as we join with our first song of the day, Love Divine, All Love Excelling.
sisters and brothers, as we just sang about hearing of that wonderful, new, perfectly spotless restoration, we also confess at that same time that we are in need of a God who cleanses and renews us, of a God who is there for us. And so let us at this time turn to him and confess our sins, seeking that forgiveness that cleanses and renews. Because if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But But if if we we confess confess our our sins, sins, God, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our our sins and and cleanse cleanse us from from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. God our God Father, our Father long suffering, full of grace, grace and truth, truth. You, you create us from nothing and gave us, us life. You, you gave your, your faithful, faithful people, people new life in the water of baptism. baptism. You do, you do not, not turn your face from us, from us nor cast us aside. aside. We We confess confess that we have have sinned sinned against you you and our our neighbor. We have have wounded your love and marred your image in us. Restore us for the the sake sake of your Son and and bring bring us to heavenly joy. In Jesus Christ our our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. Rejoice. Rejoice and hear the wondrous news that God, knowing our need, did not turn his back on us. But instead, as we just confessed, as we announced that need, he saw that need that we had, and he paid the price for all of our wrongdoing so that you could have life in him, that you could be renewed and have that cleansing flood, that you could have life and life to the fullest that God so loved the world that he gave his only son that you can now have life in him in him and his name. As a called and ordained servant of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I announce that life and forgiveness that is there for you this day, that your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us join together rejoicing in what God has done for you with our next song for the day, Who Am I? Oh 
Responsive reading from Psalm 100. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship, Worship the, the Lord with, with gladness. gladness. Come before him, him with joyful, joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter, Enter his, his gates, gates with, with thanksgiving, thanksgiving and, his and his courts with, with praise. praise. Give, Give thanks, thanks to him and, and praise his name. For the, For the Lord is good, and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Let us join in a word of prayer. O oh God, loving Father, your faithfulness endures for all generations. Your providence is in all things and it never fails. Join away what is harmful in us. Give to us that work and will to do your will in the lives of others. We pray this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, through whom we now see that your love does endure forever. In his name we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I invite you to share that peace that we have in a God who is there for you. That peace in a God who, in the midst of life, has now been there for you and has given you meaning. I invite you to share that peace in Christ Jesus this day. God's peace to you.
and such. Ooh. I got dribbles in my brown shoes. My brown suede shoes, brother. Ow. I really hope I don't knock it over. That would be catastrophic. Our first reading for the day comes from Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and 2 with various verses. Meaningless, meaningless, says the teacher. Utterly meaningless. Everything is meaningless. I, the teacher, was king over Israel and Jerusalem. I applied my mind to study and to explore by wisdom all that is done under the heavens. What a heavy burden God has laid on mankind. I have seen all the things that are done under the sun. All of them are meaningless, a chasing after the wind. I hated all the things I had toiled for under the sun, because I must leave them for one who comes after me. And who knows whether that person will be wise or foolish. Yet they will have control over all the fruits of my toil, into which I have poured my efforts and skill under the sun. This too is meaningless. So my heart began to despair over all my toilsome labor under the sun. For a person may labor with wisdom, knowledge, and skill, and then they must leave all that they owe, own to another who has not toiled for it. This too is meaningless and a great misfortune what do people get for all the toils and anxious strivings for which they labor under the sun? All their days, their work is grief and pain. Even at night, their minds do not rest. This, too, is meaningless. A person could do nothing better than to eat and drink and find satisfaction in their own toil. This, too, I see is from the hand of God. From without him, who can eat or find enjoyment? To the person who pleases him, God gives wisdom, knowledge, and happiness. But to the sinner, he gives the task of gathering and storing up wealth to hand it over to the one who pleases God. This, too, is meaningless, a chasing after the wind. Here ends our reading. Our second reading for this morning comes from the book of Colossians, chapter 3, verses 1 through 11. Since then you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things, for you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature." sexual immortality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived, but now you must also rid yourself of all such things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, and a filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other. Since you have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self, 
which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator. Here there is no Gentile or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and is in all. Here ends the reading from Colossians. Our gospel reading is taken from Luke chapter 12, verses 13 through 21. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Jesus replied, Man, who appointed me as judge or an arbiter between you? Then he said to them, Watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. And he told them this parable. The ground of a certain rich man yielded an abundant harvest. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And there I will store my surplus grain. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich toward God. Here ends the gospel reading. It's time for our children's message. And for our children's message today, I want to start off by reminding you that we have VBS coming up. And you know what? There will be all types of activities. I'm sure if you've been to VBS, you know just how much fun it can be. This year, we get to hear about someone that God showed amazing love to. How much God showed his care to, both when things were going great, oh, and when things were not so great, when things were pretty bad. Well, today, I brought with me, that can maybe help you think about that, a can of tuna. And you may look and go, what does a can of tuna have to do with Joseph? And, you know what? It might not have a lot to do with Joseph, but you might look and say, how many of you would look and say, a can of tuna, that's what I want right now. Probably not a lot of you are looking going, can of tuna, that sounds to be the thing that I'm looking forward to. But what was amazing is how God took the things that happened in Joseph's life and he was able to change them. He was able to take the good, the bad, everything in between and say that it was all for God's purposes, for his plans. When things were seeming to be at the bottom of a pit, God was able to raise him up to amazing new heights. And, you know, sometimes you look at a can of tuna and you're like, oh, this might be one of the worst things. If this is what your lunch is, you might go, ah, this is so dry. This is so boring. But sometimes you can turn tuna into amazing things as well. Well, we get to look, and when we look at Joseph, one of the things that God used Joseph for was to help out when there was a famine in the land. There was no food. People were looking, and they'd probably be excited if they had a can of tuna. They would be ecstatic on that. And this week, we get to gather things for people that maybe they don't have anything. Maybe they're looking and saying, I don't have anything either. Where when we're hearing for a whole week of how much God loves you, we also then get to look and say, you know what? God sometimes can help with reaching out to others as well to show how much God loves them as well. Just like when Joseph got to help and show that God cared about all those people that were about to go through a time of need. And so this week, we're going to be gathering to make sure that people have food that are in need as well. So maybe next time you see a can of tuna, you could think about those people that maybe God has made some space for you to help out as well, just like he did with Joseph. Let's join in prayer. Thank you, Lord, for all the ways you provide, all the ways you keep us going, that you give us what we need. We ask, Lord, that you would help us to see that you love us and that you call us to love others. We ask, Lord, that you would help us prepare for a wonderful week with VBS. In Jesus' name, amen. Brothers and sisters, I invite you to stand as you are able at this time as we confess that faith that we share in what God has done for you as we confess the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. God's grace, his mercy, and his peace to you this day from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Coming back from my vacation, had a number of people ask me questions going, how was it, what'd you think, are you feeling great now coming back? And it was something where it kind of becomes hard when you're coming back from vacation, you get all these questions. And the truth of the matter is you don't really want to come back from vacation. No one looks and says, vacation, all right. Now let's get back into work. Let's get back into doing. Because you go on vacation, and normally you're then thinking what my next vacation's going to be. Most people then say, vacation, you're looking and saying, okay, great. Now let's prepare and get ready and go back to work and do the grind to get on to the next one. It kind of goes the same way with a lot of things in life. A lot of people, when you had an amazing, wonderful meal, you don't say, ah, great, now I never need to eat again. You normally look and figure out, okay, how do I top that meal? How do I go on and find another meal like that? We had one time where I was at a water polo camp down in Long Beach, and it was an amazing apple turnover dessert that we still talk about. We have yet to find that thing again. But when you're talking about all of this, you just realize that you're normally more chasing after the idea, continuing to go after it, continuing to strive, continuing to want and need. Well, coming back from vacation, talking about vacations, talking about amazing food, talking about all of these things, 
Well, this leads us to our text for the day, which is in Ecclesiastes, where we get the hard reality, the hard law truth that it can all just be meaningless. We hear in 1 verse 2, meaningless. Everything is meaningless. Great, wonderful, worldly wisdom you hear from someone coming back from a vacation, but yet it also carries with it a lot of reality of what we see around us. How many people are filled with anxiety as they continue to strive and labor for what the next thing will be? How many people look and say, I have five more years until I retire? How many people continue on saying, this is the next steps I need to do? And the question becomes, for what? What is the purpose? What is the goal? What are they striving after? And what is it that they're hoping for? Well, we hear in Scripture, King Solomon looked upon everything that was there, upon looking upon everything that he had. And we hear verses 12 and 14 that he saw just meaninglessness. He saw as one who was the king over everything that God had blessed with great wisdom, great insight. We saw one that had great riches and treasures more than we could ever imagine. One who made the temple for God. And he looked and said, what's the point? What was all of this for? That we labor and it's nothing. It's vapor. It's a chasing after the wind, is what he says. And even the word meaninglessness carries with it a sense of just the vapid bit of air, of the nothingness, the mist of the air that's gone. We look and we even hear Jesus talking about that exact same idea, that exact same notion when we hear him talking about a rich man who looked and said, isn't it wonderful? I have made it, says no one ever. No one ever says, I have enough. So instead, he built up bigger barns to say, great, now I can store more stuff. And then he died. It was meaningless, says Ecclesiastes. It was nothing. It was a seeking after and a chasing after the wind. But brothers and sisters, the truth is, when we look at a lot of people, this is how life ends up being. This is the reality that many people face that they don't want to conceive of. This is what is staring many people in the face that they don't even want to come to terms with. I was at a coffee shop a month ago, and someone who was serving coffee, was rejoicing over the fact that he had this epiphany that when he dies, his purpose here on life was to become carbon for the next thing. That was his great moment, his great revelation, and that's what he was looking forward to in life. And you look at how much anxiety there are for people that continue to strive, and you look and say, what are they striving for? What is it that you're seeking after? What is it that you're making yourself go completely broken for? And we look, and brothers and sisters, this is not what you are called to be. This is not who you are called to be, and this is not even what Solomon says in his book, because he calls you, just as God does, to a different way of life because we instead see that the one from whom all meaning comes from has changed that meaninglessness. The one from whom life itself comes from has changed that meaninglessness of all things just becoming vapid mist, now says that he himself, the source of all meaning, the source of all that is, has something to say about this. In Isaiah, he declares that I am bringing my righteousness. It is not far off. My salvation will not be delayed. And I will grant salvation in Zion and my glory for Israel. We do not look to ourselves. We do not look inwards. We do not look at the vapidness around us to try and find salvation and meaning. Instead, we look to the source of all things, the one who is there who says that I and I alone made everything with just my voice, 
and that I have a plan, a plan for your salvation. We turn to him and say, what does he have to say on this? And even in reflecting upon all of things, our dark, cynical Arthur, author of Ecclesiastes, the one whom after toiling and saying there is no point to it all, even he turns and says, turn to God. Even he in our reading today says that God is the point and purpose. The purpose for what we see and strive for is not after our own devices, but instead what God has conceived for you. For we see in 2 verses 24 and 25, that there is nothing better for a man than that he should eat and drink and find enjoyment for his toils. And this also I saw is from the hand of God, for apart from him, who can eat or who can have enjoyment? Brothers and sisters, this is a different way of thinking because this is not eat and drink for tomorrow we die. This is not saying go and say, oh, what's the point in this? But this changes things and puts it on its head. Because this looks and says to you, all that you have comes from God. God is the source of all that you have. He made it all. It is his. He redeemed it all in Christ Jesus. We look to him as the one saying, redemption is coming. Redemption has come. Redemption will come again. And he then says, I have given you what you have. You were not striving after it to try and achieve it, but that it is there, that it is there for you. We look around at what we have, and it is not something that you have to say, how do I achieve, what do I need to do, and what is the purpose of my life? Instead, you have one that God says, I have shown you my love, redemption, my favor. I have shown you what I have done. I have shown you what is there in my sight. And we have a God who does this, who turns things on its head, who says out of the meaninglessness and voidness of life, I have come down to give you meaning and a purpose. And you might look and say, well, then what is that purpose? Do I need to go off to some mountaintop heights? Do I need to go off to some faraway land? What do I need to do to find this meaning? Well, we heard again, there is nothing better that a man should eat and drink and find enjoyment in his toils, for this is from the hand of God. We even hear this time and time and time again, that God gives you these things for your great pleasure, that he is not one that says, do not enjoy what I made, but that I am restoring, correcting, and bringing back what I made. We heard in our readings from Colossians that God says, have your mind on things above, Correct and change your mind, your outlook on what is there, to see it as a gift from your Heavenly Father, to see it as what He has in store for you. When we start looking around and having Him first and having it as the source of what we have, well, this now changes all things because you don't need to go off to a monastery on a mountain. You don't need to go off and try and find meaning in the meaninglessness. He has put back meaning in what was vapid and void. He has put back in what was meaningless a joy that was lost, a joy and a purpose for you, a joy that was not there but is now there in Christ. And this is the warning that we have because we sadly forget to put God first in our lives. We sadly forget this notion that he is the source of all things and the source of all that you have and start to again drift back to say, oh, I need to earn it. I need to achieve it. I need to go back and try and gain it. How do I seek after that next vacation? How do I go after my retirement, my 401k? How do I go after and do what needs to be done? And he says, it is my fatherly goodness that has given these things to you. It is what I have done for you that you now have it. And this changes, brothers and sisters, how we are called to see what we do and what God gives us. Because it now is something that we see a calling to live for the sake of how God has called and shown his love to you. Because if these are his gifts in your life, if this is the meaning that he has placed in your life, if he has blessed you with riches, with knowledge, with wisdom, if he has blessed you with an abundance, well, then we then see as we go and turn to verse 46. For a person may labor 
with wisdom, knowledge, and skill. And then they must leave it all on their own to another who is, oh, no, that is not the right one at all. That is the opposite of what I wanted. Let's back up and go to 46. To the person who pleases him, God gives wisdom, knowledge, and happiness. But to the sinner, he gives the task of gathering and storing up wealth to hand over to one who pleases God. This too is meaningless, a chasing after the wind. God has granted you that knowledge that he has given you wondrous things, to call, to see that he has given you things to be used, not to go off into faraway lands to try and seek off in monasteries the things above, but to be placed back into the things that used to be meaningless, to use your wisdom, your knowledge, your intellect, your property for the sake of those that are in need as well, for the sake of those that are striving after that meaninglessness, And we see that even in that sake of those that are going after and striving, you have been placed right back in their lives to show the source of the one who actually does have meaning for them as well. So know that truth, that even though the striving after might be our folly, you know the source of the one who actually does give you life. Cling on to him instead of looking to the next big thing because there's no other source and no other happiness that can be found. In his name, amen. As we join together and as we continue to give thanks that we have a Lord who has done great and wondrous things, as we continue to lift up our songs and our praises to God, we continue to see that he is the source of all of our gifts, our times, our talents, our treasures. They are all his. And he says to use them for the upbuilding and lifting of his kingdom so that others could know what he has done for them as well. We give thanks for how he continues to bless us here at Beautiful Savior, for all of the ways you continue to help us and support us here. And so we invite you to join us as we lift up a gathering prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, in the wilderness, you continued to feed your people. You also fed your son, and he fed people who were there with nothing as well when he fed people, uh, fed 4,000 with only seven loaves, and a few small fish. With the gifts that we gather, with the ways that you bless us, Lord, help us to see that you are the source of all that we have, and you can do more with little than we can with a lot. We ask, Lord, that you would continue to help us to seek after your kingdom first. In Jesus' name, amen. Brothers and sisters, rejoice in his wonderful gifts. Rejoice in how he continues to be with you. Let us join together with our next song for the day, You Are My All in All.
As we join together for a time of prayer, we have two updates that I want to give on uh, different things that we have on our prayer list. One is for Ron. As we rejoice and give thanks that he did have his heart transplant on Monday, and things have been going great so far. So we give thanks as he continues to recover. This is one of the things I kind of like about the hospital he's at. He now has moved to the other side of the floor that he's on as he went from the pre-surgery side of ICU to the post-surgery side of ICU. And so now we get to rejoice as he now has high blood pressure. It's a weird thing to rejoice in, but now that's the next thing they're trying to fix on him because his heart's working too well. So this is the next stage as he will be there for the next, I think they said, eight, uh, eight more days, and then he gets to go home and continue his treatment there. We also continue to lift up uh, Pastor George as now there is a slight delay. He was supposed to have his infusion and the whole treatment where they will be dropping his numbers down to zero before they can give the bone marrow infusion. That's on a delay right now. So we continue to lift that up because they are having complications with the person in Britain. They can't get a clean bone marrow uh, draw. So continue to be in prayers with him. He finds out tomorrow if they were able to get a clean bone marrow sample. We will definitely keep you updated on how that goes for him. And I know he is, he is in good spirits, though. So let us join together in prayer as we lift up all those according to their needs. Heavenly and gracious Father, you are the source of all that we have, all that we are, and we know of your continual love for us, a love that never fails, a love that never ends. We give you thanks, Lord, for all the ways you continue to provide for us, for the ways that we know that you are there with us, we ask, Lord, that you would continue to help us to see those ways, to see that you are present with us here, and to keep our minds fixed on the things that are above and how you are there for us and not against us. Help us, Lord, to not look to the things that we toil for, but instead for what you have won for us in Christ Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Heavenly and gracious Father, as we join together this day, we also remember all of those who are preparing for VBS for those churches that have had their VBSs. And we ask your blessing for all of those that are helping out with our VBS right now. We ask, Lord, that you would continue to help us see those ways that this can open up doors. And we ask that you would be with those that are lifting it up in prayer as well. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. As we start our gathering tomorrow, Lord, to start gathering food for those that are in need. We remember, Lord, that you are the source of all that we have and that you continue to feed the hungry, continue to be there for those. And you say, Lord, that we have been, that you have placed us to be your hands and feet. We ask, Lord, your blessing on this time of gathering for this month. And we ask, Lord, that you would continue to help us see those needs around us as well after this month. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray, Lord, for our school as it starts to get ready for that winding up for the next school year. As we join together, we lift up Harry as the student that we are lifting up in prayer this week. We ask, Lord, that you would bless her as she gets ready for kindergarten, as she prepares for that next step. We ask that you continue to be with her and her family at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Lord, with this heat wave and with all the other events that we hear going around this nation, we pray your protection and for your mercy and grace. For those that we hear have been impacted and we hear of a a couple of deaths in the, in the northwest region. We ask for your mercy and for your peace. We ask for you to be with those that are continuing to help with those that are going through this time as well. We ask that you'd be with those that are dealing with the recent flood that we hear in our country. And we ask, Lord, for your peace and protection and for those that are leading and guiding, for those that are helping and serving in countries around the world. We also, Lord, continue to lift up our leaders here in many different capacities for those that continue to help us to live out our daily lives. For this also is a gift from you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift up, Lord, those on our hearts and our minds, those on our prayer list, those that continue to need your healing hand and recovery, those that continue on with many long-term illnesses, those that continue to wait upon that day of the Lord where you will wipe away every tear from their eye, where you will be with those that are grieving, those that are going through times of difficulties. We ask, Lord, that you would be with George as he waits for that bone marrow transplant. 
We ask, Lord, that you would also hear our thanksgiving for the continual work that you're doing with Ron. We lift up, Lord, those that are caregivers and going through difficult times right now as they continue on with giving care and going through times of loss. We ask, Lord, that you would continue on letting them know that you are there for them as we lift up those that are going through and showing love and giving care as well. We lift up in our prayer needs for this day, uh, Pastor Peter Elliott being installed at Messiah today, and we ask your blessings on his ministry there. For these and for all of our needs of body, mind, and soul, we lift them up to you, Lord, lifting them up in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray. Our Father, Our Father who, who art in heaven, in heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy, thy will, will be done, done on, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread. bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. ever. Amen. As we join together for this time, I invite all of those that are helping with VBS, whether that be with some of the different stations or if you're helping behind the scenes, to come forward at this time. Yes, that does mean to come forward at this time. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, as you prepare for a week or two weeks of fun and enjoyment as we join together for VBS, do you recognize that the time that you are having here is a time and opportunity given by God to share his love to the kids given to you? If so, then say yes with the help of God. Will you help to share that faith and love that God has shown to you in the next two weeks? If so, then say yes with the help of God. Will you be faithful to the task given to you? Will you take seriously that commitment to show and share love to the children given into your care? If so, then say, I will. Will you take seriously your role as both a learner and a leader to look and show that care just as God, your good shepherd, has shown his love to you? If so, then say, I will. Then let us join together as a congregation, lifting them up in prayer for that task that they have just committed themselves to at this time. Loving God, you have entrusted these men and women with the power of your message to share your love, to share your grace, and to share your gospel. We ask, Lord, that you would lift them up, give them energy, give them guidance. Let them be your hands and feet for these next two weeks. We ask, Lord, that you would help them for both the joys, for the lows, for all the screams, for all the laughs. We ask that as we lift them up and set them apart to be part of our VBS team, that you would continue to also serve them and feed them spiritually in these times, that they would see your care in this as well. We ask, Lord, that you would also lift up and put on the hearts of our members here at Beautiful Savior to pray for them as they go through these days ahead. This we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, thank you so much for coming forward. As you turn around, let's join together, lifting them up, applauding them as they return back to their seats. Thank you for your service. As they return back to their seats, I invite you to stand as you are able. This might mean to kind of do the shuffle as they go back to their pew, but please stand to receive that blessing of your Lord and Savior. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give to you his peace. Amen. You may remain standing as we conclude with our last song. You are the strength of my life.
will glory in my weakness. I will boast in your mind. I have found in my weakness that you will be the strength of my life. You are the strength of my life. You are my song. You are the strength of my life when I am weak. You are strong. You are the strength of my life. Go forth in God's peace and joy as you serve the Lord.